Alright, so before we really delve into the scientific process and how scientists get their answers, I want to spend a little time talking about what is science. So you'll see eight true or false questions on this slide, and we're going to walk through these one by one for the next few slides. So first of all, I want you to think about these as, as we go. Science is concerned with understanding how nature and the physical world work. True or false? Question number two. Science can prove anything, solve any problem, or answer any question. Number three. Any study done carefully and based on observation is scientific. Number four. Science can be done poorly. Number five. Anything done scientifically can be relied upon to be accurate and reliable. Number six. Different scientists may get different solutions to the same problem. And number seven, knowledge of what science is, what it can do, and what it cannot do, how it works, is important for all people. True or false? So let's go back to question number one. Science is concerned with the understanding of how nature and the physical world work. This is true. Science is a process by which we try to understand how the natural and physical world works and how it came to be that way. Question number two. Science can prove anything, solve any problem, or answer any question. This is false. The process of science, when properly applied, actually attempts to disprove ideas or hypotheses by testing or challenging the hypothesis with observations or data gathered from carefully designed experiments. If the idea survives testing, then it is stronger and more likely an accurate explanation. Science is limited strictly to solving problems about the physical and natural world. Explanation based on supernatural forces, values, or ethics can never be disproved and thus does not fall under the realm of science. With new information, tools, or approaches, earlier findings can be replaced by new findings. And what science defines as possible or highly probable, they're never certainties. Number three. Any study done carefully and based on observation is scientific. Well, this is false. Science must follow certain rules, otherwise it's not science, just as soccer is not soccer if the rules are not followed. The rules of science are intended to make the process as objective as humanly possible, and thereby produce a degree of understanding that is as close to reality as possible. Scientific explanations must be based on careful observations and the testing of hypotheses. What does objective mean? Objective means it's not influenced by your feelings, interests, or prejudices. It's unbiased. Subjective, such as how attractive is that or what's your favorite breed of dog, these are influenced by feelings, interests, and prejudices, and they are more subject to being biased. The next question or statement, science can be done poorly. Is this true or false? It is true. Anything done scientifically can be relied upon to be accurate and reliable. This is false. Science can be done poorly, just like any other human endeavor. We are all fallible. Some of us make fewer mistakes than others, and some observe better than others. But we're still subjective in the end. Self-correction mechanisms in science increase the reliability of the product, but they do not take out human error or human perception. Now, different scientists may get different solutions to the same problem. This is true. Intentional or unintentional sources of bias introduced in a study can result in different solutions to the same problem. Scientists are people, and although they follow certain rules and try to be as objective as possible, both in their observations and in their interpretations, their biases are still there. Unconscious racial bias, gender bias, social status, source of funding, or political leadings can and do influence one's perceptions and interpretations. Unfortunately, science is all too frequently misused. Because it works so well, there are those who apply the name of science their, in their efforts to prove their favorite cause, even if the rules of science were not followed. Such causes are la properly labeled as pseudosciences. Also, some scientists, like individuals in other fields, have been known to do fraudulent work in order to support their pet ideas. Such work is usually exposed sooner or later due to the peer review system and the work of other scientists. Knowledge of what science is, what it can do and cannot do, how it works, what it is, is important for all people. Is this true or false? It's true. 
this is why you're in this class. This is why we encourage people to experience science courses because people need to be able to evaluate scientific information and make decisions about the information. Scientific information is used to support political arguments, advertise products, and inform people of factors that affect their health. It is important for all people to be scientifically literate in order for them to be able to think critically about what they vote for, what they buy, what they eat, and how to protect their health. What is good science? Science can be poorly done, so what makes it good? One of the things that makes science good is objectivity. It is the key to good science. To be objective, experiments need to be designed and conducted in a way that does not introduce bias into the study. You have to get rid of your feelings and your emotions and stick to strong observations and pure facts. Bias, remember, is a prejudiced presentation of material or a consistent error in estimating a value. There are two main types of bias. One of these is sampling bias. The other is measurement bias. Sampling bias involves a sample. The sample is a group of units selected to be measured from a larger group. If you want to take a survey of what people like to eat for dinner on Fridays at my house, it would most likely be pizza, but you're talking about a sample size of only five people. If we want to know what the whole human population would like, it's over six billion people, and that's not a reasonable number. So you would need to select a sample size that is large yet manageable. A sampling bias can be introduced when the sample used is not representative of the population or is inappropriate for the question asked. In other words, if you want to know what men want for dinner on Friday night, don't ask 50 women. So sample size is asked the question, is the sample big enough to get a good average value? For example, to determine the average height of students in a classroom, how many students should I measure to get the best estimate? If we only measured 3 out of the 22 of you, would this be a good average? Would my average be accurate? How many would I need to get a good average value? Factors such as location, age, gender, ethnicity, nationality, and living environment can affect the data gathered for a sample. A good experiment controls these factors by using a random sample or by limiting the question asked to a specific group represented by the sample. A random sample is a sample drawn in such a way that every individual has an equal likelihood of being selected, such as rolling dice or flipping coins. You can also run to a uh, sample selection bias. If I want to find the average height of students in the classroom, I notice a list of students that are able that are excused early because they're on the basketball team to have a game. I decide to use this list to pick students from that will be in my sample. How could this affect my sampling bias, or how could my method of selecting my sample bias my estimate of average height? What are you thinking? When you picture a basketball team, you're dealing with the tallest people in a population. So if I select my sample from the basketball team, I'm selecting the tallest members of the population to measure, and that's not going to give me an accurate average height. The other type of bias is measurement bias. Measurement bias asks, is the method of data collection chosen in such a way that data collected will be the best match for example, there could just be a mistake made when gathering the data, you such need to as be measuring height. That measurements you have to be are careful to stop accurately. the measuring tape at exactly that no zero, additions not half a centimeter or one centimeter. The results. And you also have to make sure that no additions to the environment will influence the results. So if I take height measurements of everyone in the classroom and let them keep their shoes on, all shoes add some height, but some add more than others, such as two inch heels versus a pair of flats or flip flops. This will change the measure I get for average height. An experiment that is designed to separate out the effect of multiple factors. This can be a, this can be very difficult. So I propose the hypothesis that students that sleep more than seven hours the night before a test will perform better on the test. I ask each student to report how much they sleep how much sleep they received the night before their test and compare this with their test scores. I do not ask or control their factors such as how much each student studied or whether they ate breakfast. 
How can I know that any trend I observe is reflective upon how much sleep they received and not other factors? To put it simply, trying to separate these three factors is just too complicated. So there are three ways that you can bias an experiment through measurements. You can take the measurements inaccurately. You have to make sure that nothing from the environment is affecting the results. And it really is not realistic to try to isolate one effect from multiple factors. So, in summary, good science depends on a well-designed experiment that minimizes bias by using an appropriate sample size, sample selection, and measurement techniques. And these may vary based on the question that is being investigated. The scientific community has long recognized that bias can be found in scientific studies, either by unintentional mistakes or the, on the part of the scientist, or by intentional attempts to make data show a particular desired result. There are several rules or procedures used with the scientific community to eliminate or at least reduce bias in science. These procedures include independent duplication and the requirement for publication in a peer-reviewed journal. With independent duplication, two or more scientists from different institutions investigate the same question separately and compare results. In a peer-reviewed journal, scientists submit written reports of what they have found. These journals publish articles only after they've been checked for quality by several experts, objective scientists from different institutions. The problem is most of this debate and procedure takes place in scientific journals, which are rarely read by the public with good reason. I do not speak Japanese. If I picked up a book written in Arabic, I could only admire the beautiful characters. I couldn't understand anything unless I was trained in the Arabic language. Scientific articles are full of scientific references and language that usually requires advanced training in the scientific field in order to be understood. It has nothing to do with intelligence. So, how can those of us who have not yet received advanced scientific training identify good science? We can look for bias signs, such as language, that the appropriate data is reported to back the conclusions, and then look at the source of the data. So when I refer to the language, watch things that say scientifically proven. Science does not seek to prove, but to disprove. When you write a hypothesis, you're not out to prove that your hypothesis is correct. You're looking for things to suggest that it was wrong. If your hypothesis is not proven null, void, and inaccurate, then you proceed with another experiment that will help verify your results. Also watch out for emotional appeals. Conclusions should be data-based. Emotional appeals are usually not data-based, and this is a major sign of bias. Watch for this in political campaigns. Also, watch for strong language. Scientific conclusions should only report what the data supports. Words should be chosen very carefully to avoid exaggerations or claims not supported by the data. Data should convince you, not the words that are used. So watch out for things like the cleanest, the cheapest, the most efficient ever in the world. These are strong language that is not appropriate in solid scientific reports. Appropriate data should also be used to back conclusions. If you don't see this, you may not be dealing with good science. Are sample and measurements appropriate for the conclusion presented, such as determining the average height in a classroom using the basketball team? Consider whether multiple factors are properly accounted for, such as the correlation between sleep and the test results we mentioned earlier. If all of the other factors or variables have not been accounted for properly, the chances are they are biasing the results of the experiment. All organizations produce unbiased data, however, it is important to understand the organization's motivation to be able to identify potential bias. In some situations, the need to promote special interests or make profits may lead to bias. A careful understanding of the interests and funding sources of research would give you an idea of what the bias might be if the research is biased. However, even if a scientist has an interest in getting a certain result, it does not mean their research will be biased. If they are good scientists, they will be true to the scientific process and they will design good experiments and report data honestly, regardless of their interest. 
So what I would like for you to do now is take a look at the teen smoking activity. You will find this on D2L under the content page. It's an assessment. You may work together on this. That is fine, but you will need to each type out your own responses. So feel free to get with, two, with one, maybe two other people for this assignment. Work through it. Make sure you have answered all your questions completely before you submit it. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to send me a message or to ask your moderator for help.